And we're live. We're not live. We're recording. We're not at all live. We're never but live. we are here. We are alive. We, yes. That's, we, that's a, I'm pretty sure I'm alive. That's a whole different podcast episode. It is a different that's podcast episode. OCD. Um, oh. Hello. Oh, I'm going to start this time and introduce you. Except yeah. I totally pointed, <laughs> I I pointed in the point. trying to point. I get it. I was. How are you? That's Drew. Lincelotta. He's the anxious truth. You know him. You love him. There he is. He's okay. he's awesome. And you can find him on Instagram or here on YouTube or yeah, on his website. I'm not going to get it right. <laughs> next to me on my, on my right, looking at the screen anyway, is that's Lauren. How do you say your last name again? Rosen. Rosen. Sorry, I still have you in your old name. Um, <gasps> McMeekin is my old McMeekin. name. It's true. No. It's a hard one. Um, Scottish. So, yeah. My oh, my father would better. Oh my god! I would be it. completely thrown out of your house. I'm sure. Totally, but that's yeah. fine. <laughs> anyway, Lauren Rosen is next to me. She is the obsessive mind on Instagram. Also, quite an exceptional human being. So, mm -hmm. thank you, Lauren, for, for coming you. by. Lauren's, by the way, a practicing therapist in Southern California, right? that's specializing true. in OCD and anxiety disorders. It's our jam. So here we are. It is our jam. It's our co jam for our for our musical group Fire and Ice, which we <laughs> came up with. I don't even know what it means, but it's our disco group that specializes in supporting other people with OCD and anxiety disorders. Yes, complete with a disco ball. It's going to be awesome. Anyway, today we are going to talk about values, like from an acceptance and commitment therapy sort of point of view and yep. uh, how values play into the whole recovery process. So what you got? Bring it. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess maybe start with a definition of values from an act perspective, given that there's the term values is broad and nebulous. And I honestly, I was just thinking earlier today that it'd be nice to call it something else. So it didn't get conflated quite so often. But hmm. the idea with values from an acceptance and commitment therapy perspective is that we want to reflect on what qualities we most want to embody as humans. And the beauty of values, as opposed to something like a goal, like I want to get to this, you know, marking on the road, it's mm -hmm. how I want to get there, not getting to the, to the point. Mm -hmm. um, and the beauty of values is they're always in our control. Whether or not we are acting in accordance with the qualities that matter most to us is something that we always can choose. And so, um, things like being loving, kind, compassionate, generous, uh, et cetera. Yeah. Like Open-minded, open um, open-minded, willing, yeah. all of these things. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's about attitude and, and that I think is super important in recovery, especially from the vantage point that you and I talk about so often which is that we can't control our emotional experience. And if we can't control our emotional experience and we want, we want to do all we can to cultivate a meaningful life, how do we do that? How do we, how do we cultivate joy even if we can't necessarily feel good in any given moment or feel joyful 100% of the time? Yeah. And so values become like in the, in the act world, you know, they, they talk about direction, like values aren't goals. They aren't things you do. It's like a direction. It's like a, that's right. Move in, which I love. And the thing that I love about uh, thinking about it that way is when the shit hits the fan, which it does for anybody with panic disorder, or OCD from time to time, and you don't know what to do, you can always move toward your values. Like, well, which, which thing moves me toward the things that I, that I care about, the qualities that I care about, the, the, the characteristics of life that I care about values are hard to define sometimes. They yeah, are. I'll move toward that. Which one of these two choices I can run back and get in my bed and put, go into the covers, or I can move toward this fear and try and learn a lesson from it. Which one moves me closer to the things I value? Yes. And the person that I want to be. Right. Yes. The type of person I would like to be. Yeah. 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 And I think that this is especially important when it's difficult because sometimes it can be difficult to know when we're talking in the context of ERP or exposure therapy, whichever you prefer, depending on the disorder, that sometimes we're 
we're not sure which way is the exposure way. Like sometimes we're like, oh, well, is that avoidance? Cause I'm not doing that thing. Or is this, it, does that make sense? Do you know yes, what I mean? Like it it's perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes we don't know and, and it's clearer sometimes. Yes, just more, go, go, where's, oh, yes. your, where's your phone right now? Is it near your mic or anything? Cause something is making. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Oh my gosh, it was. Yep. It's your phone. You're like. A genius. <laughs> I've just done this so many times. I know. Anyway, sorry to interrupt. It was just in the background. No, that's okay. I'm glad you said something. Where were we? So you're saying like it, when, in, in an exposure situation, is this avoidance? Should I, which way should it be going if I don't do this? How do values yes. do that? It's great. Yeah. And values can be really helpful just because that's always a good way to go. Right. Sure. No matter what, if, if something is reflective of the kind of person that you want to be, well, that's maybe an overstatement actually. I might take that back because you could say, I want to be an honest person. And then somebody with moral scrupulosity is like, well, see, I'm going to tell them because honesty is my, is yeah. my value. Yeah. Um, it's not always that straightforward, but I do think generally speaking, it's a, it's a good way of ferreting out those moments where it's not entirely clear. I always like to, to, when I, when I talk about values, cause I always say to people like in the end, you don't know this when you start. But the recovery process is one giant march away from fear and toward what you value. And yeah. you see it as you start to make progress and your life begins to change again and you become more engaged in the things that you didn't used to engage with. You know, yeah. so suddenly the choice is like, you know, like I like in my community, you know, I really have not been able to get out on my own, but I, I'm going to use a, a real life example. This person knows if she listens, but she won't mind because I won't say her name. But she was really struggling with agoraphobia, but she also promised her daughter that she would get her hamster. And so mm -hmm. after some hard work, she got to the point where she could choose, I'm going to go to the pet shop and get the hamster because it's mm -hmm. important to me. And it, it, so she went away from the fear and toward the value. So the yeah. value might not be an absolute thing, like you were saying, but yeah. if you weigh it against fear, am I leaning toward fear or am I leaning towards something that I value? Yes. And, and it's interesting because we can see that there's a clear goal in the case that you bring up that somebody... Yes wants to do this thing for their daughter and which is also really important talking about goals in the in the recovery setting mm -hmm. and i think in terms of values that could be the uh, sort of prioritization of expressing any number of values like being a supportive parent being a generous or even a selfless person right like um yeah. being yeah. thoughtful those sorts of things because um, going to get a hamster at the pet store is not a value, but it embodies a value. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And so we want more and more. And this is act is all about taking committed action toward the things that matter to us, which are goals and values generally. So it's more and more. Can you take actions that reflect those values? Yeah. And so, right. Yeah. So the, the, if you can get now, sometimes it's hard for people to get in touch with those values. I think we're in the th when they're in the thick of it. And mm -hmm. in the mud, you know, like what's important to you? Sometimes I get a blank stare back. Like, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure who I am anymore. Yeah. You know? So sometimes the values are found in the opposite of what you really want to do right now. As crazy as that sounds, you can uncover your values when you're in the thick of it. Yeah. You know? Like, well, what no. do you want to do now? Your values are probably in the other direction. <laughs> probably. Say, yes. Prob probably. Right. So. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. But you're so right. I think by the time that people get to a stage where they're willing to consider doing something different in the service of recovery. Mm -hmm. There's been so much running away from fear that sometimes people don't even know what they want anymore. Very common. And so this is where, again, this is not something that ERP necessarily in and of itself addresses. Mm -hmm. It's really important to sit down and go, okay, well, what kind of life do I want to live? Do I, do I want to live the kind of life where I, I stay inside all the time mm -hmm. and why or why not? Um, and there's going to be ambivalence, obviously. Yeah. And I think sometimes you don't know, but sometimes the way to uncover, you say, I don't even know who I am anymore. Like some, the way to uncover that is not to necessarily dig for it, but to just make room for that to come back out again. Mm -hmm. So sometimes just taking that action opposite of the fear starts to get you to the point where you're, you have enough space so that those values can begin to bubble up again and be seen. Yeah. Yeah. They're still there. You just, 
you're just paying them no mind because there are other more important things. The- yeah. Yeah. And I think you bring up another good point, which is that you sometimes have to take a leap of faith in, because of the fact that you're not really, maybe you're not really sure who you are anymore, that just taking stabs in the dark, like maybe I like doing this, or maybe this is important to me and I'm not entirely sure, but I'm going to try this thing out and see how it goes. Um, yeah, because I think yeah. a lot of people will get back into the cognitive realm of like, oh, I got to think more about this and I got to figure out what it is that's meaningful to me. And I don't know that that's helpful generally. Yeah. And it's weird because values are not tasks and they're not goals and values are not things that you do. But sometimes we uncover the values by just trying things that we have not been doing. So. Yeah. So many people will say like, yeah, but you know, how come I can't be happy? Well, we got to make space for happy and I don't even know what I want to do anymore. Just try stuff. It doesn't yeah. matter. Just try things. You might not like them, but just try them. What's, what's and the hard difference? to know if you never try, right? That's, you can't think cool. your way into figuring it out. It's one you know, of the more I, valuable things that I had, uh, the therapist that I had for a while and she was lovely. I remember calling her. I was well down the road to recovery, but I found myself in that place of like, well, well now what? Like, I've, I've literally quit my job as a full-time anxious person. And now I don't know who, I, what to do. What do I do? Who am I? And yeah. I remember her saying like, I don't know, go to the movies, like go sit at Starbucks. And I'm like, what, what kind of stuff? What is that kind of, am I paying you for this? And she was the one that told me like, yeah, well just try stuff and you'll remember what you like then. Yeah. She was yeah, right. Or maybe you'll discover guitar. brand new things that you never I knew. You literally liked. went to the music store and said, I'm going to buy a guitar. And I did. And here I am with too many guitars that I don't play well. <laughs> So I blame her, but that was good it's advice. Well, try stuff. And yeah. that was like a, holy cow, really? I wouldn't, wasn't, that was not in my frame of reference. She had to tell yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, I, I can't help but think back in my own experience too, on this front that w- it was like when I got sober, I had no idea that selflessness was as important to me as it was, right? That being of service was as important to me until I was in, the 12 step realm. And, and they were telling me I had to be doing that. And I was like, Oh, I like this feels good. <laughs> like being selfless is it's actually like, it's very selfish because I like, I walk away feeling really good about who I am, but I, I had no idea. I had no idea that that was going to be the case until maybe I was prioritizing that. Yeah. And maybe yeah. you would have found that, all right, well, that's not so much my jam, which would have been fine. But as it turns out, Oh, that is my jam. I like this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you would not have known if the program had not sort of pushed you gently in that direction. Like, try well, you're gonna have to try this. See what happens. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I will say that particular one, I think most people find it to be useful. So while I certainly am not an advocate for being so selfless that mm-hmm. you are self-sacrificing or you're ignoring your own limits and boundaries, that's certainly that's not good. I'm not advocating for that. That being said, sometimes getting out of our own heads and just trying to show up, and this is, I mean, this is in the realm of values, but um, to try to bring a quality to a circumstance, even if you're not feeling it to somebody else can be really profound. Yeah. And you don't know until you get engaged with that. And sometimes you don't know to get it until you, well, I'm just going to have to try it. I, yeah. I talked about that help when helping helps the helper. Like it's, mm. you might not be fully there yet, but helping other people might be something that helps to uncover one of your values again, that you forgot about or had been buried by fear. Yeah. 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 And it is so true though. It's, they get buried by fear. Oh, a hundred percent. And I think when people wind up like out of touch with their values, they're not sure what to do. I don't just know what to do. And that's why so many people, we were talking before we hit the record button. People are always looking for instructions. Tell me exactly what to do. Give me steps. Like, mm-hmm. well, you know, okay, initially, sure. But then sooner or later, natural steps will organically start to bubble up. I want to do this. Mm. You know, I want to do this instead of that. I'm tired of doing that. Now I want to start doing other things. And now I'm just going to try other, sh- other stuff. To see yeah. Which resonate with me. Good save, by the way. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. There's a room there, yeah. PG-13 rating earlier, I believe, but I, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's all good. I don't, I, I didn't notice. I knew what um, that. That's so funny. Yeah. I think that, and on the other side of things that 
I, it's not always going to feel good in the moment mm -hmm. to show up and be the kind of person that you want to be, right? If you are feeling, and this is outside of the realm of even anxiety, if you're feeling depressed and everything in you is screaming, pull the covers over your head and don't go outside, mm -hmm. stepping outside and taking a walk and waving at people while you're on your walk is not going to be an enjoyable experience in the moment. It's going to be very, very uncomfortable. And the thing is over time that it starts to provide uh, almost kind of what you were saying earlier, it provides space mm -hmm. for, for new information to come in, for new experiences to come in and, and for new feelings to come in. Yeah. Strangely enough. No, I agree. I, I always like to think of, you know, imagine you're living in a cube and anxiety and fear take up all the volume of the cube, all of it. Mm -hmm. it, it owns all every cubic inch of that cube. And then, as you do stuff like that, it shrinks a little bit. So there's more room around the edges of the cube for other stuff to start to show up and filter in and fill in the blanks. And then you're the better part of your brain starts to weigh in and all that good stuff happens. Yeah. 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 So in the context of like the act thing, the way I, I seem to understand it is, you know, when people are not sure, people ask me this all the time and I'm sure you get the same question. Like, well, what should my exposures be? Well, in certain instances, sometimes it's really basic stuff to get the ball rolling. But then when you can get in touch with your values, your values then dictate what your challenges are going to be down the road. Should I do yes. this or should I not do this? Is it the same exposure? Well, do you want to do it? You know, yeah. it represents something that you value that is a part of who you want to be. Then yes, do or do that. But yeah, yeah, but I'm really scared. Well, yeah, but you could really be scared and also moving toward your values at the time. So yeah. Yeah, with the willingness to move toward those values and have all those internal experiences while you do that to know yes. that, oh, I'm okay. I can still be okay. Yeah, but to your point, the motivation is so much greater when it's directly tied to something that's important to you. Oh, it's yeah. like just driving for the sake of driving to get out of the house is not nearly as motivating as I'm going to drive to the pet store and I'm going to get that freaking hamster, right? Like, 100%. 100%. Uh, so if that's, and I, I guess sort of reflecting what, like, what do you see a lot with panic disorder in terms of, or agoraphobia, like p things that people tend to find motivating in that way that tend to reflect values you see a lot? Well, that definitely those, it's the life things. So there's the planned you know, I have my fear ladder. I'm going to go up my fear ladder. I'm going to do my planned exposures. And I say that all the time. Like, those are artificial experiences to a certain extent. They count. They're meaningful. But we're manufacturing ways for you to feel afraid. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So you can drive around the block 25 times, which is not a thing that you would normally do in your life. But when life shows up for that person and says, it's a kid's school concert next week. Mm. And you make that first leap of faith to say, okay, I've been driving around the block 25 times every morning, which is totally unnatural and meaningless to me on a values level. Right. But now it made a little space for me to go toward my values, which would be, I would like to be an engaged parent and be, I would like to be a supportive parent. So I will go to the concert. Yes. And then that challenge becomes for people who are far enough down and have allowed themselves, oh, this, I can go on this, stop me because I'll just go on a tangent. No, but I like it. When they've developed the willingness or adopted that attitude of, I'm going to have to be willing to have these experience, these negative experiences they don't want to have, yeah. then they go and do a life thing that's more value oriented. Whoa, those wins are huge and exciting and uplifting. And they're so psyched and they want to share it and way yeah. better than, oh, I did my exposure this morning. And I drove an extra mile. Yeah, that's a good, that's a big deal. But yeah, yeah, stuff, way yeah. The, yeah. Well, and way more inspiring and keeping you in the the trudge yes. that is heavy and difficult sometimes so yeah i think you're you're making a really good point for both sides right that you have the the manufactured exposures are important in that it's like going to the gym you're building this muscle so that when you show up to the 5k or the marathon however you may be depending on your abilities right like you are are ready for that um but the it's way way more exciting to for people i think to realize 
oh, I could do this. Like my anxiety doesn't get to stop me from doing the things that really matter to me anymore. Yeah. But the, that, that's a good, I love the uh, the 5K or the 10K. Or the, my knees are just talking about that. But, <laughs> you know, so you go and you work and you, you get up early and you run by yourself in the rain and it's shitty. And nobody wants to do it. But you, it's not a pleasant experience in many cases or you trudge through it because the value of I want to, I want to, be somebody, I want to be somebody who could commit to things. I want mm -hmm. to finish things. And then when you cross the finish line of that 5k, that 10k, that marathon, that's the, that's where you get the good part. Yeah. The yeah. Work and the sense of accomplishment. Not, yes, exactly. Yeah. You have to be willing to have the experience where you, you want to sleep in that morning, but I gotta, I gotta train if I'm going to, yeah. if I'm going to move toward that value, I have to do this thing now that is unglamorous, yeah. and not fun and maybe crappy. <laughs> yes, all of those things. And it's really important to tie them together because I think that sometimes, uh, and I, I think maybe this is where super manualized treatment and like, we're just going to do the exposure without talking about your why is very limiting because it's, I honestly, I think that some people probably drop out of treatment. Like, why am I, why am I doing this arbitrary thing where I'm, I'm touching this doorknob and it's like, who cares about touching the doorknob until you need to get to an appointment that, uh, you know, for your loved one who's going, I don't know, for cancer treatment. Um, and I need to be able to open the door. Right. Yeah. Then it matters. Then it matters. It's funny because when I wrote The Anxious Truth, I wrote a whole bunch of stuff about that. Life is recovery and recovery is life. And that that was such an important lesson for me to learn when they started to become intertwined. Oh, boy, it, everything got so much better and so much mm -hmm. more meaningful as opposed to just get up in the morning, put on my boot. It was freezing that winter. I remember I'd just drive around in the snow and the ice. It was so much better when life started to be my recovery because yeah. there was values built into that. I was starting to move back toward the person that I wanted to be and the life that I wanted to have. Yeah. So it accelerated and I was motivated. Yeah. 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 That, that momentum that builds up. Yeah, absolutely. Very much so. Yeah. Very totally much. So. Agree. Yeah. So, you know, moving toward your values is, is kind of, if you're not sure what to do, it's always a reasonable thing to say, well, what's important, what's truly important to me. And I think it's a time thing too. What's important to me in life macro versus mm -hmm. what is important to me for the next two minutes because you're, yes. you're making all of your choices two minutes at a time. And when we act in our values, we make choices, macro choices. Absolutely. And ultimately what's interesting is that it becomes over time when you start making these macro choices that, that, that really aren't quite so myopic and, and, and time limited over time, you start to, feel differently as a result of being the kind of person that you want to be. And so that there's like this stabilizing effect where your sense of self is impervious to the shifts, right? Of the, the ups and downs of anxiety and the, the value driven actions themselves become intrinsically rewarding. So you don't have to necessarily hit some big, marker to recognize, you know what? I was just really compassionate with myself and I'm really proud of myself for that because that's the kind of person that I want to be. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that that's something that maybe doesn't happen right away because at first you're like, it, it, I don't know why I'm so random today, but self-compassion every five seconds, you're like, God, I'm such an idiot. Right. So when you are moment by moment, just tweaking that, it's not like you're feeling really good about it. But when you start to get more space or in time with the practice and you, it becomes more embodied, then you know what it feels like to be the kind of person that you want to be. Yeah. And then every single moment becomes a, like a, a moment to celebrate. Yeah. And it becomes a little more automatic and organic at first it's clunky and unnatural and yes. Having to yes. mechanically practice moving toward your values is completely unnatural and feels ridiculous. But yeah, it's, it's totally. To start, though, unfortunately, there's no other way to start except to do it that and way. 
honestly, I think that it's so important for people even who don't have disorders, you know, I, I don't think many people live that deliberately. And I think it's a shame. That's a good point. I think it's a really good point. You're right. Disorder or not. Yeah. What's yeah. really important to me. I mean, you know, there, there's certainly limits to that. We, we have to live together. So I get that. You can't, values aren't self-centered. We should probably point that out. No, so, no. I, in certain instances too, actually that, that I kind of stumbled upon a good point accidentally. I will freely say it was accidentally, but you know, a lot of people in the community struggle with that, that recovery. Mm -hmm. And I had to write about that too. Like putting yourself in the driver's seat and at the top of the priority list for an hour a day to get better is not selfish. Mm -mm. It is not right. It's not, you're not a bad person. You're not abdicating your responsibility as a parent or a partner or an employee. Like if you're not okay, you can't meet up to those other responsibilities. So when we tell yes. people move toward the things that are important to you, I know that some people listening are going to say, oh no, I, I can't, I'm not supposed to do that. Like my, my sense of yeah. worth comes from I'm always selfless. Right. But, but are you? Right. And why are you doing it? If you're actually doing it from a selfless place, from a values place, you're not doing it for some sort of reaction. You're doing it because that's the person that you want to be. A lot of people, especially anxious people who tend to be very prone toward the codependent side of things are, are selfless because they're reliant on the positive feedback. So we're not looking for, I'm going to do this selfless thing because it'll feel good because then other people will say nice things about me or think well of me potentially, but it's, I'm doing this selfless thing for me. And yeah. that also comes with not, not, we were, you know, we're giving selflessness as a value, a lot of airtime, mm -hmm. but all of the values that you hold for other people, you also hold for yourself. Or you're right? allowed to hold them for yourself. Sure. Well, and I think, but a value is not because by definition, it's a quality that you want to embody in terms of how you relate to other, to to the world around you, even. It doesn't have to be even other people. But right. the way you want to relate, period, okay. that, that's not just about other people. That's about you, too. So you can't be a kind person and be really unkind toward yourself. Right? You can't yeah. be yeah. a thoughtful person and put yourself last and never think of yourself. That's not... Right. They're mutually exclusive. So yeah. I, I think it's really important to recognize that like, well, kindness may be your value. That doesn't mean that you get to ignore yourself in that. Use self-kindness as a part of that practice. Yeah. So I think that's such a good, it's very meta, but in the same vein, it's a really solid point because I do run into people. And when you say you can't be a kind person, be, but be unkind for your, to yourself, kind of see yeah. it all the time, but that's where the values that become detached are hidden. Like, so no, no, no. Like I'm supposed to be good to everybody. I take care of everybody. I set everything out, but I put myself last and I beat myself up when I don't do it right. And I don't get the right feedback that I want. And I did. And I let everybody down. So they try to be really kind to everybody else without being kind to themselves. But then are you really being kind to everybody else? Or are you just trying so hard? You know what I mean? Like, or are um, you manipulating everybody else? Sorry, not, not to use a word. That no, is kind of I, laden, no but... I get that though. I get that. Yeah. And not even like for anyone who's watching, I'm not talking about like mustache curling kind of manipulation. I'm talking about uh, the, the kind of manipulation that we with anxiety disorders do all the time, which is how can I manage and control uh, the things around me so that I don't feel this way? Right. Right. And so I think it's so interesting, again, not to harp on selflessness, but no, 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 no. I have to take care of everybody else. I can't put myself first. That's that's selfish. But in the state that you're living in right now, where you refuse to put yourself first to recover, are you being, are you taking care of everybody? I right. would argue that maybe you're not, or you think you are, you want to, you're trying to feel good about yourself and say that you are, but are you doing that as well as you possibly could when you're in an anxious state all the time and driven by fear? Maybe not. Right. Yeah. Right. And are, is it about the other people or is it about you? Which is, that, that's where it's like, it's not true altruism, not to get totally out of Oh, it's a whole, yeah, we can talk about that for hours. Like, is there true <laughs> is it That's a, a good question. Like, that's a really good question. I don't think there is. But Probably not. That. No, I would agree with that. But, but I, I, do, I think. You're trying, some people, sometimes you're trying to express the value, whatever that happens to be, 
what you're trying to have your cake and eat it too. Like I want to be this kind of person, but I need it to be within these very safe parameters. Mm -hmm. So I'll make it look like this, but that's not really what it would normally look like if I wasn't having these thoughts or wrestling with compulsions or avoidance behaviors. So How would, like, what would that look like? I'm trying to conquer. So in other words, like um, I'll, I'll give you an example. So you have a relative that is ill in some way. So you're, you're, you're agoraphobic. I'm mm -hmm. using a, a real life example here again, but I'm not going to say names. Um, and you have somebody that you care about who's in the hospital, but you can't get there. And so it's eating at you because your values would tell you, I would like to be a supportive family member, whatever it is, mm -hmm. but I can't get there. So I will frantically find 16 other possible ways to make up for that so that I mm. feel like I'm being supportive and caring, but I'm not really doing the thing that I know is really means the most in terms of being caring. And that is right. a heartbreaking thing to see. It's somebody who's trying to live their values, but inside the box of fear. Yes. And there's space for somebody who's making their way toward visiting their family member to say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not ready today to drive several counties over to see my family member, but I am willing to do X. Yes. Right. And because we don't want to make it an all or none thing because it's not at the same token, you're not going to be satisfied with yourself if you know that you're pulling punches because you're scared. Yeah. Exactly. Long term. Um, but if you are at least moving in that direction, Maybe yes. you're not there yet in that day. It's a whole lot easier to deal with that. Definitely. Like, okay, I know I'm not there today the way I, I really want to be, but I'm, I'm working on it and I can find a little bit of a compromise. I'm still not going to feel great about myself, but I'm not going to hate myself as much as I would have otherwise. Right. You know? And I can recognize that maybe tomorrow I'll do the next thing. Tomorrow I'll do the next thing. And that's, this is a process and there, and that's where, okay. So if we're talking about okay, compassion is the value here, right? Compassion for my family member or compassion for myself. And yep. you can't, it's not like we pick one. <laughs> it's how do we balance these, right? And maybe which one takes priority in any given moment, which one needs yep. to for my growth or for my connection to this person, um, right? Like it's not always going to be a, a straight shot. It's, it's a little yeah. messy, messy and murky, I think, sometimes. It is messy and murky. All of, <clears throat> excuse me, all of this is, you know, the yes. whole idea of identifying your values or finding them again and moving toward them, letting those inform your choices along the path. It's all messy and muddy. And sometimes, yeah. you know, but sometimes you don't know which direction to go. You're still not sure. So it's okay if you can't clearly identify all this stuff. No, totally. Yeah. And I will say one way that I have found really helpful in terms of just getting some clarity around values is to look to the people that I admire and okay. to consider what qualities it is about them that I admire. So you take somebody like Brene Brown, for instance, right. and I look at her and I see warmth and a growth mindset and these sorts of this flavor of things that, mm -hmm. that even if you're not sure what it is that, that you really want to be, um, and you're certainly not there yet, like in terms of it's, it's the path that that can give at least some clarity. Yeah, you can. No, I think that's great. You can use other people as role models. If you're not really sure that's, that's part of the, just trying stuff. Well, I don't know, find somebody you admire and try to be like them. Yeah. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but it's a, it's something to try. So. Yes. And especially people who inspire you. Like, why do they inspire me? What is it that's yeah. inspirational about them? Well, they're yeah. courageous or they're um, persistent or whatever. I get it. So this has been, this is, I really enjoy this conversation, but Same. I know if you guys are watching, this is our probably one of our least nuts and bolts conversations, but these, mm. these concepts matter too. Like, not everything can be specific steps and do this and then do this and do this. Sometimes you got to take these things into account. So, and they matter. Yeah. 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 I agree. It's, and it, it's not always going to be straightforward, but if there's one, one small takeaway, uh, I think if we, you know, because I, I generally like to walk away from something going like, okay, well, what can I do to put this into practice in my life? Sure. You can, do some of the things we've already talked about, like uh, think about a role model or what have you, but maybe just one moment at a time. I love what, what Drew 
said at the beginning, which is like, is this toward my fear? Right? Is this, is my fear running? Like, does it have me by the nose and is it pulling me that way? Or is this toward something that matters to me? Yeah. That's it. Simple. Um, yeah. One moment at a time, which is the only way to make these kinds of choices. You know, it's not. And now I'm a person who has all of my values front uh, at front and center, or I'm not. It's one moment, moment at a time. We build that. Yeah. Build that. You know, the only thing I'd add on top of that is just to try and maintain an openness Mm -hmm. And a willingness, which is a big part of the whole act thing, like an openness to have these different experiences and to accept them when they come up. So when life throws you a challenge that you think you're not ready for, try and see it as something that might move you toward your values, even if it's less than perfect or really difficult. So just let these sort of things, let the organic part happen organically as it happens while you're doing the manufactured part. They should start yeah. to come together at some point. So definitely. There you go. All right, folks. Awesome. Yeah. Did all right. 35 minutes. Not too shabby. A little longer not, than usual, but I'm good with that. Not too bad. Oh, not we're, too shabby. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right yeah. on schedule a little bit. Anyway, um, I'm going to do the usual stuff that I do. If you guys are not following Miss Lauren on Instagram, I got it right. She's right there at the Obsessive. Oh my gosh. You should totally okay. do that. Awesome stuff. <laughs> you crushed it, man. <laughs> I'm the king of pointing today. I'll put myself up on the screen too. And this guy right here is Drew Lancelotta and you should check him out on Instagram and on all of the other platforms as well because he's great. How's practice going by the way? How's my practice? New practice. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's good. We're um, in the process of, of hiring on somebody new. So very exciting. I love it. So if you are in the state of California or other states, you're in, you're in multiple, you can practice in multiple states, can't you? Yeah. I, I'm licensed now in Utah, Florida, Nevada and hopefully soon to be Oregon. You are rocking and rolling. You can hit the beach, the mountains. <laughs> good. You got all the bases covered. It's all good. So in those states, you can go to the obsessive mind.com, which is Lauren's right. That's the center for the obsessive mind. That's your practice website. Yeah. Go check that. Yep. And yeah. uh, we'll do it again next week. Don't know what we're going to next week, next month. Not know what we're going to talk about, but we'll talk about something. We'll see. I'm sure we'll figure it out as we go. We usually we'll figure do. It out 30 before like we usually do. So that sounds right. All right, guys. Thanks for coming Thanks by. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Bye.